via Skype by the head of communications at uh, the Human Settlements and Water and Sanitation, Yonela, Yonela Digo. Sir, thank you so very much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. We do certainly uh, appreciate your time this afternoon. Thanks, thanks for having me. Just as a start, uh, please give us uh, the minister's uh, response, really. We've uh, read some of what uh, the minister has had to say with regards to that uh, incident that uh, we all saw and that most people are quite appalled by of that man being taken out of his uh, uh, shack dwelling naked as he was. What is the, the, the response of the minister and what was the reaction really in seeing uh, that video that was really wide, uh, widely shared on uh, social media and really the plan of action regarding uh, the the evictions which are taking place in a time when it is winter it is cold it is a biting cold uh, not only that we're in the middle of a, a pandemic what is the minister saying this is happening on her watch you know uh, the minister is really incensed by the, the evictions and the brutal and humiliating evictions that happened yesterday partly because we have been through this road with the Democratic Alliance and the city of Cape Town, where we said that the dichotomy between invasion and eviction needs to be, to be clarified. If just the general rule of the Constitution, if people have lived in a particular area more than 24 hours, those people, they cannot be evicted without alternative accommodation that, is, uh, that should be found. And secondly... Uh, now we're on lockdown, and the rules are very clear that people should not be evicted. So the minister felt that because we've spoken to the city of Cape Town about this, we've had engagement that, first, we shouldn't have evictions happening during lockdown, and secondly, because uh, 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 people should not just be willy-nilly evicted uh, 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 according to the constitution, and there is nothing in law that empowers any state institution to humiliate people, to take away their dignity, even law enforcement. So the minister is really incensed. That's yeah. why we're taking this route of going to court. Now, you know, the minister has uh, uh, more power than, uh, than anyone really in uh, the Western Cape when it comes to issues of human settlements. She is the minister of human settlements. So to say we're going to court to go and deal with, with this issue, why is the minister not doing something about this? You, you even say to yourself, we've been through this road before with, uh, with the Western Cape. And uh, the fact that there are uh, evictions happening, some of them not even seen on video footage. It just so happens that this one was caught on, uh, on, on video and the fact that we were able to share it as much as we were able to do on social media and that's why it caught the attention of, of so many prominent uh, people but the fact is there are some of these things that are happening there are some of these evictions that are happening that are not caught uh, on video and I don't want to have this discussion just about the ones that are caught on video going forward what is the minister then planning uh, uh, to do she is the one in power and as I said before this is happening on her watch sir and, and that this is very important. The minister does have the power, power to build people houses, power to, 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 to enforce the rules and laws of national government. But the most important thing is that in our negotiations, whether it's city of Cape Town, whether it's Deben, is that they claim that these people are invading land and we are against invasion of land. Now, when there is that dichotomy between invasion and eviction, so if, if a city of Cape Town fails to stop people moving into a particular land that they don't own, and those people settle, build livelihoods, uh, 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 and have a rhythm of life in that place, it cannot then come and say they're evicting those people uh, because, uh, because of invasion. Because that stage has passed, people now have livelihoods there, they have a rhythm, and according to law, a court order must be sought to move those people, and there must be no alternative accommodation. So the, 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 in a democratic process, for minister to do the things that the minister wants to do uh, 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 without uh, bullying everyone and using a bully pulpit is mm. to say if the if the, the court clarifies that um, uh, or at least re-emphasize what the constitution says that yes invasions are not allowed but once people move into a particular place for a particular period then you can no longer evict them on the basis of invasion they live there and the constitution recognizes they are stayed there so that clarity that the court must uh, must give us yeah. to say that we cannot longer move people uh, uh, in these particular areas because they live there uh, without alternative accommodation. And secondly, the, if the court feels that they must then be given permanence in that place, then the minister will act. Otherwise, uh, uh, without the, the law adherence and court adherence, then uh, we will be using.
Pulpit to bully everyone. Um, Mr. Tiko, I know there's a lot of interest, uh, particularly on social media, about uh, the well being of uh, that particular gentleman uh, that we saw. I myself am quite interested and uh, worried to know what uh, his state is uh, at the moment. I mean, after being violently you know, removed uh, from, uh, from his uh, home like that, I mean, he must have uh, maybe even gotten some injuries and so forth. What is his uh, state at the moment, and is, is there alternative accommodation or something uh, where this man is uh, perhaps? Uh, perhaps being kept. I do understand that he was being uh, accompanied to, to the police station to, to lay a criminal charge, uh, but do, do we know what uh, processes have already uh, started to unfold at this stage with relation to those uh, officials uh, who carried out uh, that, I'll call it an assault, uh, to those who, who carried it out and the ones that gave uh, the orders uh, for this to be carried out. I'd like to know in terms of what's happening with everyone in this case. So I'm talking about uh, the gentleman in the video who was ejected, uh, the people who carried out the ejection and the ones that gave the orders. Basically, if I can get uh, some kind of summary as to those, those three, what's happening. And you can see in the video, it, his accommodation was ripped apart, so he doesn't have a place to stay at the moment. Can you give us uh, an update of what's happening right now? Yeah, first of all, uh, the, the ministry does have uh, emergency interventions uh, for such uh, situations like this. Yeah. Uh, as, you, as you will know that uh, in the Western Cape, we have a lot of de-densification pro projects that we're having of moving people from informal settlements into proper houses. Mm -hmm. So on this particular case, we've had to intervene on an emergency basis. Firstly, we were happy to see him being interviewed, I think, on another news channel, looking well and looking at and being able to articulate the story, what happened from the time he was inside the house yeah. and how long he had lived there so, so that people can have that, yeah. that narrative. And from us... Uh, uh, the, the HDA that we have uh, instructed to attend to the matter, um, we are hopeful that uh, they have engaged him, they have organized te uh, temporary accommodation for him so that we can end the people uh, in the surrounding, so that they can be able uh, to, at least from now up until uh, we are able to, to give them a sense of permanence uh, has been resolved. The other 49 families, those uh, uh, that were there in the previous eviction, those we've got their records, those, uh, uh, the, the HTA is in the process of building them the houses. But we've spoken to J.P. Smith himself uh, to say that J.P., um, it's important that um, as a, a politician and as a, 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 a MNC for safety, uh, you should be able to guide, because we be, we, we're busy blaming the metropolis, um, um, and metropolis, first and foremost, uh, they need to be taught that uh, um, uh, the primary role of any government is to protect its citizens. So that, but we've we've spoken to J.B. Smith as the representative of the city of Cape Town to say that this can't continue, uh, but we will uh, uh, sort that court order so that we can enforce it. So all the elements of the people that I involved will we'll try to engage. Uh, uh, forward. Thank you very much uh, for your insights input uh, there in helping us uh, to understand uh, what's uh, happening at uh, this point. We appreciate uh, you giving us your time. Uh, Mr. Yonela Diko, the spokesperson for the Minister of Human Settlements, Lindy Wessis. Thank you, sir.